Hey guys, Rabbitry here, back with another StarCraft Brood War Remastered cast. Today we have a PvP for you on Polyboid between Quark and Chill. So Quark is playing in the Magenta Protoss on the bottom right, and Chill is playing under a barcoded smurf name spawning here in the top left. Thank you Chill for sending me the replay. Quark is a 2400 S rank Protoss, quite well known from the UK but now lives in the US. Um, participates in some of the clan and other various tournaments. Um, also streams on Twitch. Chill is a Australian Brood War player, A rank Protoss um, and a stalwart of the Starcraft community, particularly in foreign discourse like the CPL. So Chill was kind enough to send me this replay of a game he played in 2021 against Quark. Um, on paper, this is about a 500 MMR difference. Um, maybe 500 is a bit high. Let's call it 400, 350, but it is, it's a big enough gap for um, Chill to be the clear underdog. Um, so it will be exciting to see whether he can give Quark a decent run for his money. Quark is probably most well known for having quite a low APM considering the rank that he plays at. You'll see he doesn't really ever get up above about 140, 150. Um, I follow and watch his streams quite a lot and he just comes across as an incredibly smart player. Uh, his sense of anticipation in terms of understanding what his opponent is going to do before it happens is just incredible and I think that's one of the reasons why um, he's able to play at the level that he does with the APM and mechanics that he does have. So he's doing the Quark 2 gate, uh, which is a slightly modified version of the Bonneth 2 gate. And um, Chill looks to have opened with a gas core um, zealot. I think I'm still waiting to see if he's gonna build the safety zealot. Um, but the the change or the opening, sorry, that um, Chill has gone for is exactly what Quark wants to um, try and make an impact with this build. So the theory of this build or the idea is you build three zealots uh, and then you will get your gas on 20 or 21 uh, and then you will get your core. So it's a 20 gas because he has the money and then you will get your core I think on 21 or 22 basically as soon as you have the minerals available. Um, before that the money that you have will go towards getting your first three zealots onto the map so here he's scouting, seeing that Chill has got a safety zealot and he's going to build a goon. So if the timings on this are 100% spot on, Quark's three magenta zealots will pitch up here and Chill will have a zealot and a dragoon on the ramp. All right, so let's see if my sense of timing is correct. We'll just follow the front zealot and see what happens when they all get together. I think you're supposed to also include the probe for maximum... Damage, I'm not sure. This game is literally dead even, so this is quite a, a critical moment. Chill's making another zealot now behind this, but it's not going to be popped out in time. So here we go. It's the two dragoons. So the right thing to do here is you go forward and you kite, and then you and then you escort the zealots back to get a few hit points on them along the way. So we'll now flow we'll follow our dragoon. Alright, so he's on the ramp, he's bringing the probe to block. Alright, so that zealot, that goon's taking a lot of hits without getting too many shots off, and he's stuck, which is a bit of a frustration, but the another zealot has popped. The goal of Quark's attack is actually to kill the dro the, the probes on gas, um, and to slow, slow his opponent down. Um, let's see if he can get a probe kill here. So Chill is on 19 probes. Oh, that was very well held by Chill. I think he's, in essence, really taken no damage. Um, and as a result of that, he's going to have a tech lead because his range will be further ahead than Quark's. So Quark's range, you can see, is just, just starting, whereas Chill's is about to finish and his Robo is about to start. So definitely got the lead. Much better opening for Chill than for Quark. The, the requirement for the two-gate opening is that you need to do some damage. You need to get in and you need to get a few probes to, to try and gain a lead. Otherwise, you've surrendered... A little bit of the of the tech tree which is what we can see here chill is more sorry quark is more than capable though of getting out of trouble um by just playing smart so i wouldn't really be too concerned that this is too big of a setback for him um he's got four goons out on the map um and i think he may potentially push 
depending on what chill goes for now. So, chill is getting a shuttle, an obs, another goon. Um, so he's up to two gates, and he's not building a support bay, which I would have expected perhaps um, would have been the reason for the early robo to try and get a um, reaver into play because I don't. If, with Quark opening two gate, you don't really have any risk of DTs, um, at least not for a couple of minutes. So the OBS is probably not there for risk prevention purposes. Here comes the support base, so I think he does intend on, on going Reavers, and uh, he does have the shuttle, so certainly seems to be his plan. Quark's not um, doing anything at the moment with his units, he's just kind of posturing around the map. Let's see what he does with his six goons, if he tries to poke in, put a little bit of pressure on um, perhaps he's looking here to see if Chill's trying to set up for an expansion. We can see that he's not, and so he's pulling back, so that's cool. Alright, so in terms of units, um, Quark is ahead on workers, 31 versus 23. Um, he, both players are still on one base, so it's two gate robo. Um, Quark is also building an observatory. And here we have two gate robo with support bay, shuttle, uh, and now potentially setting up to expand. So no fights yet in this game. There was literally the initial three zealots versus um, the, the goon, the zealot, and then the second zealot that popped. Here comes the first fight now. So Quark's picked off this probe, and he's going to try and knock off this pylon. I wonder if Chill will cancel. I think he might have canceled that before it died. Alright, so the Reaver's down. Quark can't take this fight. He's... Uh, Chill's OBS is here and he can see exactly how many units he has and doesn't have. The Reaver is certainly the great equalizer in a lot of these fights. So I think Chill is going to try and look to do some damage with this Reaver. Where he goes with it. Okay, so he's still just parking with him in his base. Quark railing for some more Dragoons forward. What's his gateway countdown? Still two gates. No expansion. He's, he's religiously kept up with his pro production. Whereas Chill seems to have stopped at 23. And that's as far as we're going so far. So he will have an army advantage. But certainly behind the workers. Alright, so two Reavers out. Oh, he could do some serious damage here. I don't think Quark can engage here. I think Quark's going to lose all his Dragoons. So he sees he spots that he's outnumbered and he moves away. I don't think Chill's going to let him get away though. He's chasing him. Oh, and he gets a Dragoon. Nicely done. I think this retreat is going to turn into a fight in the natural. I don't think Chill's going to retreat here. I think he feels that he has an edge. He hasn't built workers for quite a long time, so he knows that he has to do damage here or he's going to have some problems. Counter-attacking Zealots is going to be annoying. We're going to keep track of this fight. Okay, so Quark is going up to a third base. Um, Chill is not just putting down his natural expansion. So economically, Quark is miles ahead. And unless Chill does some damage here by destroying some bases, uh, he's going to be in big trouble. Alright, so pulls away, drops the Reavers. Oh, those are some nice Scarab shots. That one's going to dud though. The ever tilting tilt that is bloody Reavers. They're railing down a few more goons. Moving his goons around is Quark. Alright, so is he just going to push straight into the natural here? I think he might, and this could be a trap because we can see that Quark's goons are on the side end. There's going to be a surround. This is a big moment, but these bloody reavers are really strong. There's only four goons here and about six on that side. I think that's too many. The shield battery comes in, so I think Quark senses that he's going to be in trouble here. Oh, those shots from the scarabs hurt like hell. So he's retreating and I think his natural is going to fall. I really wish Chill was probing up a little bit behind this just to try and consolidate his economic or just try and catch up economically while he's doing damage here to Quark's economy. That's a lovely shot though. He's going to get a few probes too I suppose. Okay so I think he's going to clean this up. Both Reavers go down. But a reinforcing Dragoons have arrived, and so uh, I think there's enough defender's advantage here for Quark to hold on. 
And I think now would probably be the right time for Chill to pull back uh, and potentially start to expand again. A lot of pressure though from Chill, but here come more Dragoons. Alright, so it's 5 on 3 with a battery. I think even the high ground advantage isn't going to be enough here. And Chill notices this. Quark is only... So Quark's now on 4 gates, so he's got 4 reinforcing goons coming out every time. Here's one of them, and a couple more will pop soon. And I think all these Dragoons are going to die. I don't see any more if I spot the minimap. Chill's stopping here. I don't think he's going to send more Dragoons after this. He's got one left. I think he's going to pull away with him. He's actually going to try and get away, but he doesn't. Okay, so... A potential overextension, I think really good damage initially. Um, but Quark managed to maintain his composure. He's still got a huge lead, both economically uh, and now potentially in units. Um, only a couple of Dragoons. What has he got? He's got a Reaver over here and two Dragoons. And he's still just on two gates production. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about Chill here because he's got a worker deficit and he has a production deficit. So in theory, he's dead in the water. Thankfully though, um, Starcraft is not a theoretical game. Alright, so we've got four gates. We're going up to four gate production. We're building another Reaver. Um, behind this, Quark seems to be teching into Templar tech. He's getting a Citadel, getting a Forge to start his upgrades. If you follow his stream like I do, you, you will know that Quark is a very upgrade-centric player. Um, constantly see him measuring his upgrades versus his opponent based on where he is to try and establish how he's progressing in the game. Okay, so... Quark sending in his obs. I think just to get a view on what Chill is doing. Chill has now started to get a few workers. He went from 23 to 32, but has now stopped again. Meanwhile, Quark still has the 49 probes and building more. Um, I think very much with the intention of re-establishing this third. And with that in mind, I just think that he's got a, a very, very strong position here. Another obs. He's got two obs on the map. I don't think... Excuse me. Sorry, I just drank a coffee before I started the stream. Um, I don't think Chill has an observer on the map at all. Um, which if... Uh, or any cannons. So if Quark were to build one or two DTs, uh, Chill would be scrambling to get an observer out without taking any damage, that's for sure. Alright, so it's just pumping probes here like a madman going up to 60. Um, that very much shows the intent to re-establish this third, as we've just seen he's done. Um, and Chill is moving out with a shuttle that's got some Reavers in it. And his Dragoon Zealots, which have got no upgrades. Okay, so we're going with 0-0 zero, zero, uh, ground units and Reavers to take a fight here in the middle of the map. Okay, Chill is still at a huge economic deficit, so if he doesn't do serious damage in these next fights... Um, he's going to be going to be done for. This is quite a big. I'm going to zoom out just to see this. So that Quark's doing a surround here, focusing down the Reavers. He's got one, and he's got the shuttle. Oh, these Reavers are not long for this wall. That was really good focus fire play from Quark there. And I think that being said, though, there's enough blue here to take out the remainder of Quark's forces. So focusing down the Reavers did come at the cost of taking a lot of hit points. So he's gotten through and he's again, I think, going to overrun this third of Quarks. So this game goes kind of back to where we were. As I mentioned, he doesn't have an observer with his army. So this is going to hurt. Oh, he's just walking right past. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. So this DT is here. Does this trigger chill to build an ops? I really hope it does. Does he even have a forge? No, Chill doesn't have a forge, so he's going to need to build an obs. Okay, so his obs has suddenly popped up out of the woods. He must have, must have built one while I was watching the fight. Okay, so he's got his obs there, so he was able to take care of that DT. And um, he's sending in another group of reinforcing units. What sort of production capacity are we on here? We're on six gates on two bases, and we are just flooding in gateway units. Zero, zero. And we've knocked down his third base again. But still, it's 100 to 86. But the worker deficit is such that... Chill still has the army advantage, and is this going to be enough? When we are taught to play StarCraft, we are taught that this is the wrong way to play. This shouldn't work. <laughs> and yet it is. 
Observer's there, he's got great visibility if any DTs come out. I think this unit's charging up for a storm. He's not got one yet, but he's about to. Although Quark's just started researching storms, it's not going to help that the Templar's there with energy because his storm's not done yet. Nice kiting from Chill. Really good, really good micro. Okay, so I think Quark once again has weathered the storm, and I think Chill is now probably going to position his units for a contain over here. Uh, I don't know if moving in is necessarily the right thing to do, but if you could set up a contain here and limit Quark to two bases, um, that's going to put him in a very strong position because he's mined out of his main, whereas Chill is not yet mined out of his main, his natural is very healthy, and because he has map control, he could quite easily set up a third. So Quark's pushing forward here, his storm is now done, and we see the very first one of the game. And uh, this Kiting Dragoons are doing good work. He's got enough Zealots to tank in the front. And he's sending in some reinforcements here. So Quark's not going to be able to break out. And Chill moves into the lead. Briefly. And now uh, a couple of rounds of macro have taken care of that. But it's his army lead is huge. Because the worker deficit is 34. And this is just going to be enough. The fact that he's got this containment now. Quark's not going to be able to break out and take a third, and he's going to get this across the line on two bases. He's sitting up here to take a third if he needs to, but I think he has identified that if he can break through here now and shut down this natural, it's game over. Oh, that's a lot of good storms though. Really, really solid play. Quark is a top player. He's going to make you work for it, even if you do have a good advantage. Alright, here come the Zealots. No Zealot speed from Chill. Just doing this with good old slow sluggish zealots and some Ronald the Reavers pumping in some shots, getting a few probes. I think he's taken about 10 probes in this fight, so it's been it's been pretty solid so far. Some Archons coming in now from Quark. What's Quark's um, plus one only? Okay, so not a very upgrade centric game from either player this time. He's working on some more upgrades though here, as you can see. So Chill is just constantly rallying down. You can just see this wave of blue coming down to this area. Staging here and then deciding in or out based on what his observers see. I think now he's got probably enough to defend and attack, but not necessarily enough to take this base. And that's really all this is about. The longer Chill denies this base, the uh, the more well, the more definite his win becomes. This would really be an upset, but a, an incredible, credible result if it does go this way. It's looking now for all money that Chill's going to win this game because Quark is going to run out of cash really, really soon. All right, so he does well. He's fought his way out of there and picked off the Reaver. And this is very, very close. You've got an Archon, two Goons, and a Zealot. And here comes another Goon. Oh, no, this is going to be really close. Quark is just so desperate to re-establish his natural. He's done it anyway, regardless of whether he has enough units to or not. And I think Chill is going to have to take a breath here and regroup. And then move in on this base again. But this is really what this whole game is centered around, is can Quark get up another base? Behind this, Chill still not taking a third of his own. Um, he probably doesn't need to. I think if his game sense is right, he fully understands that Denying this third, it's GG. And I think he's gearing up for one last fight. I don't think Quark's going to have enough. He's frantically building out of his five, six gates. Supply? Question mark. <laughs> Alright, so he's asking. Because uh, I think he knows. I think he knows. Alright, so 75 all. Close game. Good to see some banter between the players. This was definitely a friendly game. Um, you know, just the two players practicing. Um, so that's nice to see good spirited game and I think Chill knows that if he can take this engagement he's going to win this game he has his observers with him he has one observer with him that's more than enough to see this DT and you can see Quark is rallying his units together he's got his storm ready he's got his DT ready I think this DT here is just to try and scout oh he sees him he's going to pick him off he's going to chase him no he leaves him okay and here come more units from Chill. I think he's going for it here. This is the moment. We're just going to zoom out to see when it comes. And then we'll zoom in when we get to the fight. This is the moment, boys and girls. If he gets this, he wins. Oh, good storms. But the Reaver gets his shot off. 
Oh, he restorms the Reaver twice, which means none of the main units take any splash. I don't know if that's the right move. Oh, this is so close, though. But he's pulling away. You don't need to fight this chill. You can just kill the Nexus. And that's what he's going to do. He doesn't follow the units. He just picks off the probes, takes down the Nexus, or starts to. The probes have been pulled. Now Quark's going to have to try and come back and kill this fighting up a hill against goons on the high ground. I don't think he's going to have a chance. He does have probably an upgrade advantage, but I don't think that's going to matter much on this with the numbers and the high ground advantage. The goons do get up the hill, but there's just not enough of them. It's got four left versus seven or eight, possibly more. Still incoming. I can see him rallying further units down from his main. And that's it. GG. Chill takes down Quark in a very, very enjoyable, very interesting PvP. He's so excited that he keeps playing. He doesn't leave. <laughs> uh, well done to both players. A very enjoyable PvP. That is a nice scalp for you, Chill, to have achieved to beat a player as good as Quark. Thanks for sharing this game with me. It was really cool. I'm Rabbit Roo. I'm a variety Brood War channel. Um, do subscribe for regular Brood War content. Until next time, ciao for now.